and now we'll discuss about the IV use of drugs. First of all, let me ask you a question. Why would you require the use of IV antihypertensive drugs and when their oral options are also available? So the answer is that first of all, of course, like I've written one on the board, it's a hypertensive crisis. Patient is delirious. She is not oriented. She is not conscious, and you have a very high probability of this, uh, you know, the drug being aspirated. So that is one condition. The other condition is that you know the whole idea of giving an IV drug, vis a vis an oral drug, is the fact that it, the bioavailability will be more as compared to the oral drug. Like you all know, the oral drug goes through the first pass metabolism and less of it is available in the uh, circulation and obviously for action. But when you give a drug parenterally, one thing is for sure that the bioavailability is going to be more than that of an oral drug. See, oral drug also takes around 20 minutes to act. IV drug also takes its time to act. I wouldn't say that it takes 20 minutes, but yes, the uh, mechanism of action is the, the, the time difference is not that much as as what is important is the bioavailability. So that is a very important key concept. Why do we use the IV drugs? For example, if a patient is conscious oriented and she has come at a BP of 170, 110 and uh, maybe she's in labor and she was not diagnosed earlier and she was not a patient following up with you. You have no history whether she had this BP before or not. You So you inquire from the patient and patient's relatives and they said that this is the first time she's have, had this uh, you know higher BP. We did not know anything about it. So what would you prefer? Would you prefer giving her an oral drug or would you like to give her an, an IV drug? See, this is a condition in which you will give her an IV drug. So I would want to tell you about the IV drugs over here and I will tell you in this order of preference because this is the order of preference in which practically these drugs are given. The thing which I'd like to stress upon over here, like I did in my previous uh, oral drug medication as well, was the fact that you should know in the market what formulations are available and in how much strength do you get in the market. Like I told you about Labetalol tablet, what is the strength, the Depin tablet that you get. So you get also a Depin retard tablet, but that is like a slow release formulation. Depin retard you've given at night and then it works for the, in the next day also. But remember one thing that no matter how high they do, they tell you that retard it goes on for 24 hours, usually the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, if you study properly of that particular drug, the effect is from 12 to 18 hours max. It doesn't go beyond that. So if you have to repeat it, you might repeat a little early as well. Anyways, that is not the point which I'm going to discuss over here. Let's now start talking about the IV formulations and the IV drugs available. So if the patient is, uh, you know, in a state of impending eclampsia or already in a state of eclampsia, that's a hypertensive crisis. And in that case, I would want to go for an IV formulation. Now, what are the IV formulations available? What should be my first choice? By the history of the patient, at least you should know that she is not a you know hyper, uh, congestive heart failure or a heart disease patient. You should also know that you should also inquire that she's an asthmatic or not. For of course, for one reason because of prostaglandins, and the other reason is also that lobetalol is contraindicated in this patient who has asthma. So otherwise, in all other patients, you can give lobetalol. Now, lobetalol, in the market, the ampule of lobetalol, it comes, um, 4 ml ampule it comes and the amount of, uh, amount of uh, drug lobet that it has in it, or lobetalol that it has in it is 20 milligrams. That means 4 ml contains 20 milligrams. So, each ml will contain 5 milligram. And what is the dose of lobet that you can give it at first? 10 to 20 milligram IV always give slow. 10 to 20 milligram IV slow you can give. Wait for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and you can repeat this drug. That means what in the book it is said that 10 to 20 milligrams start with 10 to 20 milligram slow IV. Wait for 20 to 30 minutes and you can repeat. That means 20 to 80 milligrams that we have jar in 20 to 30 minutes time interval. So what we follow the regime like what we do is we first give slow 10 milligram IV, wait for 20 minutes, if it doesn't subside, we take the BP again. If it doesn't subside, the next rule we give is 20 milligram IV. If it doesn't subside, we continue with 20 milligram and if it still doesn't subside, we will increase the dose. That is how it is done. So increase the dose in the sense earlier it was like 10 milligrams and 20 milligrams and 40 milligrams and 80 milligrams. But we usually do it in smaller 
uh, you know steps by not increasing it just the double but with my maybe by increasing because there's no way written that you have this is the way to increase in a step ladder pattern you have to you can increase also 10 20 30 40 you can do like that as well but you can also do 10 10 10 10 20 40 10 20 30 that's how you can do so this is how it goes because the the, the dose that is asked to repeat could be 20 milligram to 80 milligram anything in between can be given slow iv but the amount of duration till which you have to, to have to wait is 20 to 30 minutes so this is how levetilol is it's very easy the maths is very simple it's it's an hypertensive crisis means i'm talking about an emergency situation in which you will not have the time to find out that oh, oh how, the sample is how much ml okay that means how much milligram no you should know this at the spinal level at that time you have to just instruct the you know the nerves that you have to give to ml to the patient give 2 ml slow iv dilute it if you need to in maybe 8 ml of saline and give slow push slow iv take time take 5 minutes time to push it slow but go slow now let's talk about hydrolyzine. The other drug of choice, if suppose for whatever reasons you cannot give, levetilol. So now hydrolyzine, it comes in various, uh, with various brand names like hydrolyzine is one of the names in which, which is very easy to remember and you can, uh, you know, keep it in the tray in which the emergency drugs are kept. And each ampule of hydrolyzine has 1 ml has 20 mg. So how will you give this drug to the patient? in, in uh, uh, emergency situation. See, 1 ml, if you dilute with 3 ml NS, it becomes 4 ml solution. And every 4 ml contains 20 milligram of the drug. So, if you give 1, mil, uh, 1 ml to the patient, you will give 5 milligram. And that is the starting dose. So, starting dose is 5 ml, uh, 5 milligram slow IV. Can be repeated in a, in a span of 20 to 40 minutes. But they have not asked to increase or escalate the dose. They said the same thing can be repeated in 20 to 40 minutes. So ideal time interval, I think it should be 30 minutes in which you can repeat this dose to give it again. So now that that thing that you have, every ml contains 5 milligram. So in that way, it becomes an easy solution. So every 1 ml has to be diluted with 3 ml NS. And so you have 4 ml in which 20 milligram of uh, salt is there. And you can give 1 ml and then. Now comes the third and most important drug, nephrodipine. Why I'm saying nephrodipine is important is because this is an oral drug, okay? Depin, like I said in my previous class, is the oral drug that is uh, has the salt nephrodipine, which is uh, discussed when we talk about antihypertensive oral drug, oral medication. Very clearly, one thing was discussed, and this is in Vogue since a long time, never give this drug sublingually because it is notorious for causing sudden acute fall in blood pressure which has lead, led to deleterious effects and you do not want that those things to happen as a result of which um, it's very clearly indicated that it's not to be given sublingually. Now, uh, can you imagine a patient who is already in deleterious state uh, who has come to you? She's almost in a state of impending eclampsia. How will you give her the oral drug? So this is where sublingual drugs drug was earlier on given. I mean, I'm talking about uh, maybe 10 years from now. But then it came that you should not give this sublingually. So this is the last resort of drug. I mean, in such a patient, I don't know how will you be able to give. You have to control it through IV route only. But if at all, the patient can orally take. I mean, there are many patients who tolerate very high BP also in, uh, and they are conscious. So you can always give this patient uh, 10 to 30 milligram oral drug, nifedipine, and again it can be repeated in 30 minutes if the need arises. So in 30 minutes you can repeat uh, nifedipine as well, but you always should know that the, the most important side effects of nifedipine are facial flushing and headache, lightheadedness and headache. Certain postural hypotension can also cause, but all these things are not so dangerous that you can you know, withhold the, the, the use of nifedipine. So yes, of course, it's a very potent active drug. It has its own profile of deleterious effects, but none of them is dangerous enough in which you can just abandon the use of nifedipine until and unless you're, you're using it sublingually. So you never should use it sublingually. And that is the reason that I've already spoken to you about. With this, I finish off with the antihypertensive medication in uh, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. I have very elaborate notes on uh, hypertensive disorders. 
and i would appeal most of the exam examination going uh, students to uh, subscribe and have a look at those notes because they are going to be really really helpful to you i've tried to make these notes as you know elaborate as possible taking into account all the available guidelines which are there all the available um, journals that i could catch hold of and nothing has been left all the recent advances including the full pies chart the prep s chart the um, uh, placental growth factor which are the new recent introductions to preeclampsia have also been included so please watch these uh, notes and um, prepare this chapter properly for your exam because this is the most often repeated um, you know chapter which is asked